just had a 12-year-old boy show up here at my front door asking for help. Said he had just came from a neighbor's house, and we know there's been problems at this neighbor's house. He's got tape around his leg, he's hungry, and he's thirsty. On August the 30th, at 10.50 p.m., a phone call to the police was made, in which a person in Utah cried over the phone when describing what he had seen. A famished boy who was 12 years old knocking on his door with duct tape around his ankles and cuts on his wrist. The child was Russell, the youngest of YouTuber Ruby Frank, who had a successful channel called Eight Passengers. And just like that, we have a case on our hands. Hey, I'm Leo. In 2020, I did a video on this channel called Eight Passengers. It was quirky at the time because everyone was unaware of the situations that weren't happening behind the scenes. We just thought family channels were crap, so we joked around. What I've learned a few years later is that it couldn't be further from the truth. And today's deep dive is on one of the most heinous people on this platform, Ruby Frank. Or as people actually call her, Ruby Frankie, which is going to be hard, hard for me to remember because it's hard for me to remember someone I don't want to talk about. But let's start. Also, I just want to say a uh, warning. Some of the information here will be sensitive to people who have a soul or are mothers. You have been warned, so brace yourself and then when this is done, embrace someone. Okay, but before we get into the next deep dive, let me tell you about today's sponsor, Raycon. Raycon have set themselves apart with premium audio quality. Not only are their everyday earbuds fantastic, but did you know Raycon has other home and tech products? I love that their charging cable has a swivel so you never have to jam it into a tight space. Their products are useful across the board and a perfect line last minute gift or to help someone ring in the new year. Right now, Raycon is offering limited time bundles for their best selling items. It's the perfect opportunity to snag some great deals. I've got my eye on the fitness headphones kit that comes with three pairs of great quality headphones for 25% off. You could gift two and keep one for yourself. Maybe you have a new year's goal of going to the gym more. Their headphones would be perfect motivation for workouts. Now for me, I like traveling a lot, so I need something great to put in my ears instead of listening to Ethel tell me the same story before I land in a different country. All I gotta do is put these on and listen to a podcast and it's like she's not even there. I'm sorry Ethel, I like the Joe Rogan experience way more. For a great last minute holiday gift this holiday season, get premium audio and Paratech at a great price and save even more doing it. Go to buyraycon.com slash 16leo to get 15% off site-wide. Career beginnings. In 2015, Ruby, her six kids and her human egg husband created a channel called Eight Passengers and within a short amount of time her videos had gained traction. The videos were a window into her life, showing a typical Mormon suburban family home. Basically, they started off as most people did in like the 2015 to 2020 era when people like uh, the most famous one of all, which is Austin McBroom, that other his wife, Catherine. Oh God, I never remember her name. And the kids. Now, I hate family channels. I don't think they're good. I have no idea why YouTube promotes them. And I think this is A1 evidence as to why this should never exist on this platform. But in 2015, they were getting pushed harder than a baby out of a mom's butt. That's what I think happens. By 2020, the channel had amassed 2 million subscribers and over 1 billion views. And here's my theory on why. So I was actually really thinking about this. I watched Eight Passengers, not, <laughs> not religiously, only for the lulls. I couldn't figure out why people actually like this. And it occurred to me, I'm a brown man, which means I'm not a white mom, which is probably her audience, or at least moms therein. I think that her discipline styling for like the time period might have attracted people who were just getting onto social media who thought maybe I'm having trouble with my kids. Or one of the theories that I saw that really makes a lot of sense is that Ruby actually represented a group of people who felt like they know what they were doing. Remember that episode in SpongeBob where Squidward said, maybe we don't have to be good, we just have to be really loud. And I think that's what Ruby Frank did. She was just so loud and really authoritative that maybe new parents or people who didn't know what they were doing with kids thought that she did. And that's probably why she gained a lot of subscribers. Looking back on it, it feels like everyone was just watching borderline crimes unfold and we should have immediately got to the problem. Because when I immediately saw her, I was like, ugh, this is trash. <laughs> Between 2015 to 2020, Ruby uploaded family vlogs every day, many of which showed her authoritative behavior, as well as the over-the-top parenting style many fans and viewers deemed to be child. If you haven't seen what Ruby Frankie does, you're going to. She's known as a momfluencer, which sounds 
like a made up term if you have an illness. That's That sounds like when you're like a shit mom, but you have a smartphone and you don't know if you want to pick the kid up or pick the smartphone up. You're a mom influencer. I wrote down here, an influencer who has no talent, but needs their kids to succeed, pretty much. So she had six kids and then one egg husband and her makes eight people and that's why she called herself eight passengers and she used them to get views she was actually quoted in one of her videos as saying something like uh my favorite thing is using the kids to make content which is like this is diabolical right that was diabolical you can't not look at it and be like hmm, she sounds like a sweatshop like i don't know how you can do that so the looming question is is ruby frank a bad mother i think She's terrible. And I have some examples to prove it. Let's let's take a look. How about this one? Withholding food from her kids. Even in prisoner of war camps, they don't do that. I'm only gonna say it one more time. And then you're gonna lose the privilege to eat dinner. She's often taken food from her children and taken many other things which we're gonna see. In fact, her six-year-old forgot to pack her own food one day. What did Ruby Frankie do? Yes, that's right. She decided that her kid was going hungry that day. And when the teacher from her school said, I don't feel comfortable that the six-year-old child doesn't have food. Ruby Frankie took to social media to snitch on her kid. Okay. Got a text message. She said that Eve did not pack a lunch today and can I bring a lunch over to the school? This happens quite often when you're having raising children. Did you say when I'm having raising children, maybe you need to go to fucking preschool, woman? I'm not that tired. I can understand grammatical errors any day. Why do you look like Eminem in 8 Mile? What? Are you going? Are you late for rap battle? Do moms do that? Eve is responsible for making her lunches in the morning. It's a six-year-old. Six-year-old. I can tell you it's six years old. I wasn't thinking about, God, do I have to slice the tomatoes to get it thin enough to fit into my lunchbox? That was not a problem. You have kids. So you can be uh, their protector. Even after they turn 18, I just want to say this. Maybe this is my personal opinion. They're never not your children. My mom still thinks I'm a baby and I love it. I really appreciate that. Because every now and again, I'll get sick. I'll get the flu. Something will happen and I will think, mm, I wish I could have some soup from my mom. Something like that. It's cute. It's beautiful. It's parental. But imagine the six-year-old is like, I forgot my lunch. Damn it! I need to survive in the wild. But this is not a good parenting style. This is crazy. So the natural outcome is she's just going to need to be hungry. No, but that's not the natural outcome. The natural outcome is that someone with human level intelligence will be like, oh, my kid is going to starve if I don't feed it. That That's my baby. I'm going to feed that. Because remember, Ruby, kid didn't say, I'm going to... I'm just gonna come out you had to conceive her so now it is your duty to protect her and, and you're not doing that hell even animals are like damn my baby dolphin is hungry i'm gonna feed it tuna i don't, I don't know what dolphins, know what dolphins eat. eat hopefully nobody gives her food and nobody steps in and gives her a lunch who says that oh, holy horror house uh, hopefully no one gives her food god do you know if she adopted like an african child she would be like the worst like you, she'd be in jail like earlier than she already is because people would have been like you can't do that whoever says that to their own child you crazy disgusting hobo okay so maybe that didn't convince you you're like food overrated people can go without eating for years how about this one can they go without sleeping now she sent her son to live in the wilderness because of a prank this is one of the most gangster this is just a prank bros i've ever seen imagine sending your child to live in the wild so her uh eldest son i believe chad he pulls pranks on his brother the pranks are mormon like pranks like ooh, too slow stuff like that uh but she thinks this is witchcraft and just like the salem witch trials she overreacted and her and her husband the egg decided to send their kid into the wilderness to live for seven months so we spent weeks and months inviting this child to change holding sorry did you just say this child as if he's not your what a way to remove yourself from any situational responsibility i don't think i've ever heard a parent be like this child right here this is my child this child you're talking to like you just saw someone on the street and then like exile them to a camp bruh this child accountable and when that wasn't uh, a decision we could see that this child was going to make we said okay what is a visceral experience that we can offer this child as a gift having him go to a wilderness therapy camp 
was what we came up with. Well, you know, you came up with the wrong idea, crazy lady. But also, I mean, in hindsight, now that I think about it, maybe sending him away was a good idea because that probably was the best eight months of his life, living on the ground, eating twigs and berries, being fed way more than he is at home. I don't understand. You get millions of dollars, which Ruby Frankie is going to tell you she made later on from exploiting your kids the least you can do is feed them you literally are treating this like a goddamn sweatshirt you're very much exactly like that the only difference is that they're your children god damn chat today has just entered the anasazi foundation wilderness therapy program that sounds made up though that sounds made up the anastasi wilderness child protection program the fantasia wild wilderness bambi protection program last time this happened bambi's mom got erased that doesn't sound like a real thing how do you even find that program how do you even this is like a utah white thing it's not just a white thing there's a utah like this is like crazy crazy thinking people who seek out these websites i don't even think this should have been a real website i don't think having a website being like is your child uh, crazy how about you send him to us in the wild for eight months it's reached a point where um, chad needs to develop some very basic maturity and skills that he's going to need as an adult yeah, he's 14, brother. He's 14. Like, this is like you saying, Oh, man, um, look at Brad Pitt. I don't have the same amount of hair as him. So uh, just because I'm different, I'm going to send myself to the Anastasia Foundation of Hair Removal Camp. I don't understand. Like, he's 14 years old. When I was 14, I was delinquent. I'm still one. I don't know what he did because I watched this video. This was, in fact, the first and only video up until this point I had made on the eight passengers family. And to my knowledge, I didn't even know what he did because they wouldn't say it. They even say in the video. So people asking what Chad did, we're not going to get into any of that. He knows what he did. But we don't. You're just lying as far as we're concerned. And you are. The idea is with wilderness therapy is if you can survive with these peers in the wilderness, with nothing more than the clothes on your back and a couple of field supplies, then there's nothing in this world that you can't tackle. Two things here. Two, I just got two things. Firstly, that sounds like an upgrade from your fucking house. Secondly, anything that resembles how Bear Grylls live is not a great indication of survival. Like, yes, Bear Grylls can survive in any situation, but in 90%, of Man vs. Wild. You, the audience, probably thinks, I'd rather die. There's there's a scene where he eats elephant poop. And I will tell you, from the bottom of my heart, there's not a scenario in my mind in which I'd like to carry on with life after sipping on that elephant poop. So if you're looking for Bear Grylls thinking, this is the guy who I want my child to be like, good for you, he's a great man, but not everyone wants to eat elephant poo poo, okay? They do not sleep in tents, they sleep on the bare ground. And uh, whatever if, shelter they can Or make. if they can make a shelter, they can sleep in the shelter they make. Again, again, if if you're basing your whole parental techniques off the, the hit reality TV show Survivor, I don't, I don't think you understand what good parenting is. The actual object of Survivor is to survive that and then you win a million dollars. When Chad comes back, he doesn't win a million dollars. He's just better equipped to deal with poor parental situations. I don't know. I don't know how this is cool. Yeah, Ruby Frankie also has the nerve to say they don't sleep on tents. Uh, they sleep on the ground. And in another video, she explains that uh, these therapists and everyone else thinks it's good to sleep on the ground. So it must be pretty good. To which I say, then why the fuck do you sleep on a bed? Why don't you go to the wilderness camp? It seems like you deserve it. Oh no, I'm almost certain she She's using that money that she got from her children to sleep on the best of beds. So yeah. But speaking of beds, how about when Chad came back? He thought everything was good. They used that Anastasia Foundation Wilderness Firehood Camp to get him reformed. He's 14. He comes back. He's a man now. And he pulls another prank on his brother. This time he wakes his brother up and says, we're going to Disneyland. Then his brother's like, where is it? And he says, it's not there. His brother cries. But Ruby Frankie sees this. And guess what she does? She presses alt delete on his bed for seven months and gives him a beanbag that's right she made her son her growing son sleep on a beanbag for seven months and we we all just sat there and thought this was normal so yeah in this scene we have chad sitting on a wall probably the most comfortable place he's been on for the last year or two next to his mom who can't help but be on camera because i don't know if you've noticed this but unlike a lot of other channels uh, ruby frankie cannot be anything other than the center of attention yes it's eight passengers 
but seven of them are her bitches, and most of it is Kevin. Kevin's a dad. She is the focal point, and that will be my next point that I'm going to discuss, but she sits there and she watches her child make the others laugh by doing a harmless prank. Yes, it might have been like a little over the top, maybe, if you're a strict parent. But in terms of pranks, Ruby, I want you to know if you go on YouTube and you search a prank or prank invasion or any of these prank channels, like defeating my grandma with the, the sword of heaven or also, you know, uh, using black magic on my grandfather to control his underpants. There's some crazy pranks out there, but it's a harmless prank. Also, maybe you need to check on your other son for putting on sunglasses at 2 a.m. when it would be pitch black outside. Maybe you need to teach him the difference between sunlight and moonlight. I, I don't know. Point is, I don't know where it's warranted to take s someone's bed away, but the thing that Ruby's actually doing is what would constitute as... as <laughs> I know we're gonna have to censor that word, but if you take away anyone's right to eat or sleep, you're taking away their necessities. Food and shelter, that's inhumane. By the UN, by by the human decency, it's, it's inhumane to do that. So a lot of you are like, hey, that's not fair. But what you guys didn't know was, <laughs> Chad didn't get any room. Mm -hmm. He didn't he didn't get anything. He Oh, so we thought it was unfair, but now that you're like she pulled like a you guys think that this is unfair that the kid gets the bigger room, but what you didn't know is he didn't even have a room. And before this, he was staying in a forest. That's not a good point, lady. Chad hasn't had a flip phone, a smartphone, any kind of phone, and it's been over a year. Mm -hmm. And um I still have no intention. Yep, so she defends her decision by saying he does some crazy stuff. She also says that none of her kids have phones. Now that is a parental decision, but what Chad says next about him not having any friends is sad. And how can you make friends in this day and age when all you're doing is getting uh, bamboozled by your own mother? Really hard to do. Like, even your parents, you don't like them. You can't make jokes with your brother and you don't have communication in the world. So, I don't know. When you make these choices with your family to take things away, as a parent, you really do want them to have these things. And it's been so, so, so difficult to take a phone away, to take a bedroom away, to take iPads away, to take access. Does that not sound like a dictatorship? Does this not sound like her own little North Korea? Can I say that? I'm going to. Doesn't it? She'll take all their social devices away, yet shove the camera in their face at any given opportunity, even when they are uncomfortable or don't want to because it makes her money. That to me sounds like a horrible parent. And this is all before the actual allegations, which are not allegations, they're true. This was all the precursor to it and YouTube allowed this and promoted it. Which brings me to my next point. Say you're like, man, who needs bed? Who needs food? I'm just a levitating fucking monk. Fine. But how about making your kids uncomfortable, shoving the camera in their face when they are in situations which shouldn't be broadcast to public. Now, I don't know how you feel about posting videos of kids. I personally, I feel like YouTube should have a certain age limit where people who are under the consenting age should not be allowed to be filmed and put on camera. They should be stringent. And I don't care if it's your own family. It seems like this is an area which you can't fully have that realization till you're older. Sometimes when you're a kid, you don't know the camera's being on you. You're not old enough to know that. Then when you grow up, you realize this is not what I want. And this is true with one of her kids, Sherry, who moved out and disassociated completely with the family, did not want to be part of it. Those videos would have stayed up if YouTube didn't ban the channel. My point is Ruby's been doing that to her own children without their consent for so many years to actually gain leverage. Here are some examples. Do you know what mating is? No. Do you want to learn? Julia hasn't had a talk yet. Want me to tell you? Ah, uh, yes, of course. The infamous birds and the bees talk to a like young, maybe 10 year old daughter who doesn't, it's not even like a, mm -mm. she told her mom no. And to tell your mom who's a stringent dictator like person no, straight up, would pretty much indicate that even though you're scared, you do not want to hear about this. I don't know. When I was 10 years old, I loved SpongeBob. At 20 years old, I would still rather watch SpongeBob than listen to the birds and the bees talk. So, no. You sure? Yeah. Do you want the talk? No. I had it at your age. I don't want the talk. Why? You thought I had it. She proceeds to do the talk, by the way. That's crazy. I mean, like, I don't even understand. How is she going to ever hear about the talk from who? She doesn't have a phone and you're going to kill her if she even looks at a guy. So this would be bad. 
But if that's not bad enough, how about showing and talking about one of her daughter's armpit hair and how she's really hairy when she's visibly kind of uncomfortable and probably upset that the conversation is happening. Julie has been asking all summer if she can shave her leg and armpits. And I, I never said that. I, I don't want to don't shave. You don't? No. That's what I'm gonna do when I have kids. I'm gonna have a kid. Junior, how's how's your how's your balls? No, it's not. It's not like I just wanna, cause it's you growing, Junior. As kids grow, their balls drop. But father, I am only but one years old. What? what? You're one years old? Well, shit. Ruby Frankie was teaching her kids at that age, and it's impressive that you can talk at one years old as well, Junior. Yes, father, I can do so much more than your dumb little brain can. This this is okay apparently. This is talking to a. This young girl who does not want to be there getting embarrassed. Do you know how bad it is if people at her school knew she was on this channel, looked her up, and then saw that? You're making her a target to other people by doing this. And for what? What does the embarrassment get you? You're a bad parent. I just want to say, by the way, there are too many examples to actually, like, dissect all of them. I'd be here for hours. And maybe I will be here for hours next time. But my gosh, I've just picked some of the ones that I thought are the most egregious to me. There are compilations by many amazing YouTubers who took the time to watch her shitty channel and dissect this. It's, it's terrible that she has compilations and not just one many so you know maybe you're someone who's like i don't care about food or a bed or even making my family members uncomfortable i'm just like insane okay cool but how about would you even admit that you're like just a neglectful evil person probably not then you're not like ruby who admits that she neglects her kids yeah so because she had a, a newer kid a newer model she fully admitted that she did not pay attention and neglected the older one. This is the way that she treats kids is like iPhones. Every year she has a newer version that's updated and the one before it goes to the back and gets old and dusty. That's not how you should be talking about humans, let alone your little humans that you had with your egg off a husband. But wow. wow. So maybe all of that's not good enough. I can't even remember the list. But how about this? She approves of incest. That's gotta be, that's gotta be a, even if you're evil, you're like, well, not with my sister. God, even the people in Alabama are like, I don't do the other things. I hate him so much. He's so cute. You know, I've said it so many, I would date Chad if he was not my brother. I always younger. felt that way about my brother. And all my friends are like, ooh, you're weird. Bruh. Bruh. Imagine walking with your husband and then your child says she wants to date your brother. <laughs> she wants to date her brother. And the most concerning thing is like, all of that happened and the mom is like, yeah, that's how I feel about my brother. I'm sorry, honey. I meant felt. Stop being like that. Be he knows my number. We're family. There's so many things wrong with that. And, you know, the fact that your kids, or at least one kid wants to date the other one, the fact that you seem to not only encourage it, but empathize and also relate to the situation. The fact that your husband is there, because I will tell you right now, if my girlfriend was like, damn, I wish everyone was as dateable as my brother, I would be like, go ahead, my darling. You can, you might as well date him because you're not dating me now. Okay, so if all of that does not prove that she's a bad mother, how about this one? She's Delulu. That's it. That she's just very delusional. And she let her intrusive thoughts win. And this is what happened. It's clearly one of the worst things that I've seen. Oh, my daughter was saying her prayers. Eve, she was six years old at the time. And she was saying her prayers and she said the cutest thing. I thought it was so cute. What was the cute thing that she said, Ruby? Please, Please tell, tell me. me. She said... Dear Heavenly Father, please help me to survive. But why? And it giggled a little. You evil bitch. Her six-year-old prayed to survive. Christopher Walken in the movie The Deer Hunter prayed to survive, where he was captured by Vietnamese people and then made to play Russian roulette. Your daughter's doing the same thing he's... And you found it funny. You thought that was cute and funny. Oh, the little kid is trying to survive. <laughs> The joke is, she won't. She's like Satan herself. Was That was an experience for her and she, melted. she, she melted. She was angry and yeah. I, 
and I and she starts and all that should prove Ruby Frank is one of the worst mothers to ever exist in human history all right narcissism once watching her content it's not a stretch to assume Ruby Frankie is a textbook narcissist someone who believes the world revolves around them and must adhere to their rules achieving that with the kids who rely on our support physically emotionally and financially had never been enough for her what follows are examples of her displaying her selfish tendencies out in the world as well so in one example she cries over over a TikTok song that was played in her school. The video is 12 minutes long. She gets in a car and she rants because this is what Eight Passengers does. And I didn't know this. I was like half asleep wondering what she was ranting about. It was a Flo Rida song. <laughs> the way she speaks about it is as if Flo Rida wrote the song as a diss track to Ruby Frank. <laughs> She's, she takes it personal. And I kept wondering like, what the hell did Flo Rida ever say that people hated? She had them apple bottom jeans, boots with fur. And to Ruby Frank, this is like, you know, She's just hearing like Satan, be like, kill everyone, et cetera. And she reacted like a Karen would. It's crazy though that people have to sort of bend down to her womb. The principal of the school and the teacher who assigned uh, everyone to dance to a certain group of songs, which is what happened in that clip, stood by her decision because, yeah, the world doesn't just revolve around Ruby Frank. We all have to share it. It's a communal place. And it's unfortunate that some people think that whatever they say has to go and always is right, but it's good that people stand up for what they believe in. I, for one, believe Apple Bottom Jeans. Great, great song. Get Low is also a good song, but if she heard to the window, to the wall, to the sweat drip down my balls, I don't know if she'd still even be alive. I think her head would literally explode. Narcissism. Here's another one. You don't get personal space, because this is my space because I'm the parent. If you want your own personal space, you'll need to get your own space. Ah, but you dumb, crazy bitch, they can't because they're minors. They would, they would actually need to be minors, and I mean, to dig a space of their own to which you wouldn't actually invade it. You are a space invader, and you are as old as the game, Space Invaders. You told me Let that me you talk. don't eat breakfast. Let when me I go eat lunch. Let me talk. You yes. asked a question, yes. then you all went and attacked. Yeah, I, I don't I don't know what kind of power trip that she didn't have in growing up. I'm not sure what happened to her or why she is the way she is. But clearly she has some issues on dynamics of power, the abuse of power, and the fact that she constantly exercises the right to say the words, I'm the parent, so I am the figure of authority, really, really shows that distortion of perception of power. It's, it's actually ridiculous to see. In today's day and age, the lack of understanding and the constant thought of I'm the parent so I must know what I'm doing is uh, such an extinct thought. It's so defunct at this point that it almost seems laughable that she says this and gets away with it. And in 2020, when people actually started catching wind of her channel, it had been going for five years at this point, people were saying, this is crazy. Her and her husband actually took to the car to respond to their haters by saying some really stupid shit. Oh, the parents don't give their kids beds, and I totally agree with that. I know there are lots of children out there whose parents are neglectful. Yeah, you're probably on a Facebook group with them. NGP. Neglectful goddamn parents. We got accused of child abuse when we sent Chad to Anasazi. Guess what? The first thing that they did was take a bed away. They, they don't have beds, so Chad slept on the hard ground for months. In the wilderness, they don't have beds. So, come on, why does Chad get to sleep on a bed? Because he doesn't live in the fucking wilderness. That's why. You know, it's run by psychologists and therapists, and if... Not no, you dumb ass. It's run by people who need psychologists and therapists. It could never be run by psychologists and therapists. Bear Grylls doesn't do this every day. Bear Grylls doesn't live in the damn forest. He has a wife and kids. I'm sure he has a home that's not made out of elephant poop because if, if, if it was made out of elephant poop, he would be eating it. Sorry, I love Bear Grylls. I'm so sorry to Bear Grylls. He's God. But with narcissism, as with everything, we have tendencies to say things like I, me, I'm the focal point of attention. And also whenever I am under scrutiny, anything that I am done wrong is either deflated reflected or backed up by evidence to suggest that I am indeed not in the wrong and everyone else 
even though it's overwhelmingly negative, is actually the people in the wrong. Narcissism is where you can do no wrong, you are the main character of your storyline, and everything has to go right for you. In 90% of the cases, that is not true. Narcissism can be a good thing, it can be an important thing, but not like this. <laughs> Between March 19th, to August 31st, 2023, Child Protective Services were called to the house on 15 different occasions by neighbors, but according to CPA, there was no evidence of a home in disarray. So they talk about wellness checks, and on 5 different occasions out of those 15, police actually assisted and came through the home with them. No evidence was found, like I said, and I did read some statistics, I saw a few different videos on this in which they say that when CPA, child protective agencies are called, oftentimes they look to relocate black families. And when it's white families, it's very much less likely to actually be a matter that gets taken up as opposed to a black family, which is the system failing. Failing to recognize who actually needs help, the system being racial, stereotyping, and things just not working out. And for 15 times, 15 different occasions, you'd think that someone found something but I would venture to say 15 fucking times is enough to actually take a deeper look into this I don't think anyone would call on 15 separate occasions to a certain person's house if they didn't have probable cause once is like oh uh, it's he said she said twice is a bit crazy 15 is like there is definitely something up and we can't afford to let this slip so there is a lot of people to blame and I'm gonna get to that but 15 different times nothing was found so by 20 2022, eight passengers was shut down. And I thought Ruby Frank had shut it down herself, but it turns out YouTube had banned the channel. Now that's cool, but I really don't understand to this day why YouTube said nothing about this. With JStation, they banned him, they left a comment on their YouTube Twitter with Sniper Wolf. They temporarily banned her, they left a comment because people were asking about it. But with Ruby Frank, they just swept this under the rug as if they didn't have any responsibility in the matter. And I find that really bad in terms of accountability. And I know we can't police everyone, but at the same time, when we can at least do something like say, okay, this is not good, we're taking your channel away, it's good to at least inform people as to why it happened. Nobody even knew it was taken down because nobody watches that anyway. When her channel was taken down, she met this girl called Jody Hildebrandt. And this is where the cult of Jody begins. The Ruby and Jody cult. Quick tangent, let me show you one video as to who this Jody Hildebrandt is. If you've seen the allegations, you've seen that Jody Hildebrandt is also facing the same amount of charges as Ruby Frank, but you might not know who Jody is. This one video will explain everything you need to know about her. You know, people used to be called retarded and there was no negative connotation to that. Yes, there was. Yes, there was, Jody. Yes, yes there, was. there was. And there's nothing bad about retard. It just means slow. Oh. Holy crap, then I've got re-internet. Is that, can I say that? Rintinet? How do I say that? Because it's really slow. Retarded in several areas, like baking's one of them. <laughs> And also human communication, just living, just, yes, I, you know what, I won't disagree with one statement that she made there, and that is it. If you say so, Jody. <laughs> if you say so. 50 years old, I didn't know what a sif was. That's a little slow. There you go. That's it. If you if you don't know who Jody Hildebrandt is, that's all you need to know about her. That's perfect. That'll, that'll do. That'll do, pig. That'll do. In 2023, Ruby Frank was seen with mental fitness trainer, and if you want your life to suck, life coach Jody Hildebrandt, who ran the now deleted YouTube channel Connections. It was a cult. It was a cult. It was a cult. It was a cult. The two had met as early as 2020 in a video where Chad mentions Jody as his therapist. By 2021, Ruby and her husband, human Humpty Dumpty Kevin, began going to Jody for marriage counseling. That is like going to a drug addict to get rehab. That is not the right thing. I have it on good authority that Jody Hildebrandt was actually prohibited from being a licensed therapist after 2012 for breaching patient confidentiality. So basically she started saying like, I would not tell anything to anyone. Someone told her something and she's like, oh my god, Ruby, <laughs> this guy Chad, he's uh, he hates his mom. Oh, crap. He taught me about truth and distortion. Mom probably talks about Jody all the time. I've mentioned Jody a few times. She has a podcast 
called Connections. So yeah, they brought her up uh, as early as 2020 and I guess she had snuck her way into their family and slowly proceeded to destroy it. Just like the movie um, Parasite, actually. And she's white. You could call her para-white if you wanted to. But she, yeah, she started, she destroyed the family. You'll get it. More information on this later, but Kevin and Ruby are split up, so her marriage counseling worked. They're both destroyed now. Ever since she had been mentioned, there had been a sharp decline in content and family dynamics. Jody Hildebrandt, the licensed therapist, proceeded to ruin everyone's lives. And here's some footage from their cult, which is a cult. I was a hugely disconnected, selfish, aggressive, neglectful mother. Entitled. Entitled. The, the way she leaned in, uh, I was a neglectful, selfish mother. Entitled. Entitled. Bitch. Bitch. I was a, I was a really, do bitch. Say bitch. Do, do bitch. Say bitch. I, w I was a not a good, uh, say, do, do bitch. Do scream bitch. I, w I was a bitchy, okay, mother. Okay. I did not get her. The way Jody just like leaned in, like, you're also, you're ugly. Say ugly. Do ugly. Ugly. Kevin looks like an egg. Damn, she's sitting there like, where's Waldo and shit? This was their show, Connections, the one that after Eight Passengers ended, Ruby decided to get on. And it seems more like a cult than ever. It almost looks like the two girls from Girl Define grew up and went rogue. Even more so. Because I want to do what I want to do. I want to yeah. be able to go to Target. I want to be able to shop. I want to be able to have a moment of silence where I can just think. It was all about me. Okay. Okay. Then why did you have kids? In the famous words of Michael Jackson, if you can't feed your baby, then don't have a baby. If you want to shop at Target, it doesn't require you to have kids. I don't understand why you want that. You want space and time, take it. You had six kids. Six times you made that decision. None of them are twins. So she had six of those and then was like, back off me. You wonder why I left YouTube to save my kids. No amount of money. I And I'm telling you, I was making millions and, and and i really want to talk about how youtube is uh facilitating that just now i really think that that's a conversation that everyone needs to have because it's a really important conversation to understand and to realize that if youtube is promoting this giving you money rewarding you for this kind of content we are going to see more of this so it's an issue that needs to be fixed big time. But carry on, Ruby. Tell me. Flex on me. And they didn't have a mother up the front saying, I don't care what the world's opinion is. This is the truth and this is where I stand. Actually, that's the reason why you're in this position. You didn't allow other people to actually help you. You thought everything you did was right. They didn't think they were entitled. You were using them like the sweatshop that you think you are. And you're a horrible, horrible human being. Like, I don't... That's not at all what happened. You're just... You're still lying to yourself in this cult. This cult sucks. Man, Man, I'm leaving to the next cult, bro. And fortunately, I had a chance. I had them in my home long enough to do it, and I'm not going to lose them. That one didn't age quite so well. <laughs> Lol, you did lose them. You're in jail. What? What? I don't want to lose my kids, so I duct tape them. Yep, I'm an idiot. Because your kids are the target of distortion and you can't go to target if your kids are being the target you can't decide which target you want to go to and which target you need to go to i get it uh, let me let me offer a solution walmart i don't know if that solved it so please Thanks. humble no. yourself oh. become curious about what we're saying if you start getting reactionary i am so curious about what these two are saying and why she looks like a fucking target employee now that i'm looking at it she has the target vest on is this a fucking target ad is this what target they paid these two bumbleheads to do this is that pop plan from target 3.99 at target succulent stop yourself and say stop jennifer stop rachel stop that's, that's neither, neither of, of your, your names, names. what are they trying to say to me what am i not hearing why am i want to fight them <laughs> That's your distortion. She knows. This woman knows. She's had people say words like, I want to fight you before. She already preemptively is like, I know what you're thinking. You just want to want to fight these people. Fight the urge to fight me. Everyone does. That's what comes up in me. Anytime I want to fight someone, I'm like, stop, Jody, stop. Well, how often do you want to fight people? I love principles more than my child. Yikes. Why are we even here? 
Why are we even here? Why? Why? If this dumbass of a mother can say stuff like this just straight up, why? Why? I I still I'm I, I jury's still out on whether people should be allowed to have kids. We have a driving license test before you are allowed to be on the road with society. But making kids fine? I feel like there's a test that you should required to take, bro. And Ruby would have failed it. That's a really and and that is the truth. <laughs> that is so that's pretty much the cult of Jody and uh, Ruby. They went on to give advice to other mothers who also seemed to not like their families. She sort of did a swap. I don't know if you noticed, but Jody is not her husband, bold Kevin. So you're probably wondering, where is Kevin? Well, they split up in 2022 without telling anyone. Social media star Kevin deleted everything and was not seen in the house anymore. Jody's marriage counseling since 2021 had worked so well that they decided they love marriages so much they'd get married to other people. So now that we've seen these two bumbleheads and how Ruby is a bad mother, let me talk about what happened that fateful night. The arrest. August 30th, 2023. Ruby's 12-year-old son escapes from a window of Ruby's friend Jody Hildebrandt's house to call for help. He has tape around his ankles and wrists. Police also find Frank's 10-year-old daughter at Hildebrandt's house, who was also malnourished. Frank and Hildebrandt were arrested promptly. The same day after the arrest, Frank's oldest daughter, Shari, became very vocal online about the abuse her and her siblings suffered, even sharing a Google document someone had made documenting the abuse. Her oldest, Sherry, had moved out. She had disassociated with the family. She had realized she was almost in this cultish thing, and it it is very important to know it is not the kid's fault. I don't think anybody thinks that, but we you can never say it enough. People who are integrated, who only know this, who belong to this world, who never know what the outside world is, it's very hard for them to get help. But whenever you actually have a situation where a boy has to climb out to their neighbor's house and ask for help, when the neighbor is a grown man crying on the phone because he's in such pain seeing this, you can very much estimate that this is not going well. And uh, kudos to Sherry for speaking out. I really hope the kids are doing well. I've been trying to find, like, read articles to see where anyone is, but I can't seem to find it. All I can do is I hope that they're okay. Google Doc basically just goes through a list of all of the things she's done wrong. Some of the stuff we've seen, some of the stuff I haven't covered, people having those videos, re-uploading them, was the best thing we did because we had visual proof that this is what happened. So, yeah, 15. 15 CPA checks. Nobody found anything. There's also been a petition 17,000 people had signed to free Chad because they did not think the living conditions that he was in was good and I, I think I signed it too at the time because the damn wilderness thing even back then when I didn't know much about the family I thought this was much I was at my first year on YouTube at the time I thought maybe this is just some family channels are pretty extreme I had yet to learn about how bad it goes I was yet to climb down that rabbit hole and now that I have I think that there are so many issues and so many different moving parts that refuse to accept responsibility. For child protection agencies, if someone is constantly calling the same place, I don't think it's okay to just let that sit. Like I said, after 10, 15 times, it's not like you can just say, oh, okay, people are getting it wrong no matter what. There's got to be something where you keep an eye out on someone. If someone accuses someone of doing something and then 20 other people come forward and say the same thing, it's not a coincidence. It couldn't be. That is very hard to assume it's that so I just find it hard to believe and I'm really sad that it had to get to this point to lead to the arrest I cannot believe she had a channel going for almost eight years then she started a new channel and it took one of her kids escaping like it was a true crime thing which it is Ruby Frank made it from the commentary channel where people were light lightly roasting her including myself to the true crime network she's on the law and order network she's probably on the show unbelievable to say the least and nobody could do anything about it Skippy's not the worst thing in Utah Skippy's the man compared to these goddamn people that dude's just trying to get his nuts in at least he's trying she's not even trying shout out skippy the aftermath on september the 5th 2023 ruby frank and jody hildebrandt were officially charged with six counts of felony child abuse each sentence is up to 15 years in jail with a total sentence of 90 years for each of them kevin the human egg gordon ramsay has been waiting to cook his whole life separated from his wife and is now fighting for custody of his kids if you ask me he's just as responsible as ruby and i would hate if he gets custody of them 
because I don't think that you can possibly refute that he was not on some level aware that this was happening. And if he wasn't, you're not a good dad. I, I, don't, I don't know how else to put that in black and white for you. If anyone has to find my kid with duct tape, if it's my wife or anybody in my family, I'm going to Liam Neeson them. It's not a joke. Like, it's just, this can't happen. And I, I don't know what happened to Ruby Frank, but it is just terrible to see someone like that succeed and then have them caught like this. It took a really, really brave neighbor and an even braver kid to defy everything, to escape his own mother's wrath to save himself and possibly the family. So that kid, Russell, is, is a hero, plain and simple. She's a shit mom, a shit parent, and a shit human being. YouTube should stop promoting family channels and people should stop watching it. I, I don't know if there's a better conclusion that I can do. I don't know if there's some amazing like summing it up thing. I don't think there is. I don't think there needs to be. I just want to talk to you quickly about how I feel about YouTube. This is really tough for me because it's like getting a job and then being like, thank you boss, you pay me, and then shit talking your boss on the platform your boss is using. It's like if I was hired by like the, the New York Times and then I wrote a piece entitled why the New York Times is shit and I hate their boss and then published it in the New York Times as the front page. YouTube's a great platform. It allows people to watch what they want and us, the viewers, get to decide. But we only get to decide because we see what's on there. We don't know all of these amazing channels that exist because YouTube has to push it out through algorithms and they dictate those by who's watching what and all of these methodical things that they say. But the truth is there are some unethical behaviors on here that keep getting ignored. There are some people who seem to have treatment. Wink, wink. I'm not going to say who, but it's a type of wolf for the sniper. And there is a lot of things that YouTube can do to prevent these measures. Because if you're promoting this, if you're paying, like Ruby herself said, moms millions of dollars to shove cameras into their kids' faces and get them to pretend. If Austin McBroom, the guy who couldn't make a basketball team, but is getting paid more money than basketball players for exploiting his kids, is succeeding, there's a problem. And I get it, it's not easy. Life's not easy, but the solution shouldn't be, let's have a kid so then I can make easy money and exploit them. And if that is the system, YouTube shouldn't be the place to reward that. So pushing these videos out, making sure that's what gets views instead of other things is really, really tough to see. It's tough to act like YouTube wasn't at, at some point responsible for the growth of this person. And I feel like, in a way, I'm, I guess, glad that she put it up on YouTube because we have evidence of it. But in another lifetime, I think that if she didn't succeed on this platform, maybe she wouldn't have become so extreme. They say success amplifies your issues. It doesn't create them. And I think that Ruby Frank through YouTube had reached that point. So I just find it really bad that YouTube promotes this stuff. I don't know if they still promote it. I don't know about all these family channels, but I know what I saw and I didn't like it. That's all I have to say. That was the deepest dive I've done in a long time. And now I'm going to embrace someone. I hope that you have a good day and I hope that you enjoy these deep dives. Please tell me if you do. If I ever have, have eight passengers, I'll tell you right now, I'm going to use Ruby Frank's motivation to never treat my kids horribly ever. If there are people like this who exist in the world, there's got to be people who are so, so amazing that the kids are like, mom, get off me. But secretly they love it. And I'm going to be that dad. My kid's going to be like, Dad, stop hugging me in public. My friends are watching and I'll be like, yes, son, I'm glad. Now everybody knows that I love you. I hope you find someone who you can truly love, guys, because it's a great thing. Take care. Bye. She ain't even got a ass. She did a dash and bit a lash. You know a dash and she knows.